between the last video and this video, I took it upon myself to add a little bit of code here. First of all, I just moved the monkey on the screen up another 10 pixels. And then I created a function called move monkey. And that's being called with an event listener, a touch event listener that I put on the background. So it's on the background scene. So when you touch that, it's going to jump up here to move monkey. I'm just checking to see if event.phase equals began. And then I'm setting a variable called speed. And this is just a little calculation to make the monkey move the correct speed, whether you're moving them a little bit or a lot on the screen. And then we're doing a transition to on the monkey. That's just to make the monkey move to wherever you tap on the screen, going from side to side. So let me run this real quick here. So we tap over here, he moves, tap here, he moves. So we can actually try and avoid these things here, unless it's food, try to catch the food. All right, so we've got a moving monkey and we've got falling objects. So let's go ahead and look at collisions. So setting up the collision, we're going to set up a collision listener on the monkey. So we're going to go monkey.collision equals, and then the name of a function, monkey collision. So the name of the function is monkey collision, which we'll create in a moment. And now we have to add a listener. So monkey add event listener. And we've looked at taps and touches before, and this is a type of collision. And we're going to tell it to look at monkey. It's not a function called monkey. It's actually looking at itself, but it's looking for collision. It's looking for monkey. Here's monkey. Here's collision. That's how it finds it. It's a roundabout way, but what happens is when the collision event happens, this function will be called. So let's go ahead and set up monkey collision. So right up here, let's go local function monkey collision. And we've got two things being passed in self, which is the monkey object, and the event record, which is normal. Now the thing about collisions is collisions are what's called noisy. So every time these things hit each other, there's a collision that happens, and this event is fired. And there's a begin, and there's an ended, and when they bounce and hit each other, there's multiple. There may be dozens or even hundreds of these things. So we need to kind of filter that out a little bit. And so we're just going to look for if event.phase equals begin. So we only want to know when the collision just starts. Then do something, and we'll just print foo, just so we can see it happen here. So let's go ahead and see if this is working first. So hopefully, soon as he gets hit, yeah, we see Foo down there. And we see Foo again. And we see Foo again. Okay, good. This is working. So now what we want to do is we want to find out whether he's hitting food or whether he's hitting other things. So we're going to say if event.target, let me close this window down here so that we're not distracted with all the foos. So if event.target, and of course that is the monkey because he's the target, he's the one that the collision is on. So if event.target.type equals monkey, and we set the monkey type earlier when we created him, and event. Okay, how do we know what the other thing is that hit him? Well, it's called other. That's what's really cool. Event.other.type equals food, and that's why we set up food or other inside of spawn. Okay, so if it's a monkey and it's food, then we will print chomp. Else, we'll print, ow. All right, so let's give this a shot now. And there was canteen. We'll avoid the canteen. Oh, he, we're going to hit. Oh, we got hit. We got hit again. It says, ow. That says, chomp. That says, chomp. And you can see that there's actually some multiples there. It's hitting him and then sliding off of him. And each one of those is a new collision. But we've got food saying, chomp, chomp. And, come on, get over there. Oh, big old, yeah, that's not good. Ow, okay. So this is cool. So we've got the collisions happening. Now this is the place where you would put in something add to the score. You'd put that in here. And of course here, you would put in some code to lose a life. So there's our look at basic collision detection for physics. And like I said, this is kind of the essence of a game. It's a little hint of a game, and you could very easily take some of the stuff that we've covered in the previous lessons in the course 
to add some scoring in here. And maybe when he gets hit, changes from the happy monkey here to a different kind of monkey. And in fact, if you look in the images folder, I actually put some other monkeys in here. So there is a monkey with his arms crossed. His arms are up. There's a sad one. He's dead. And if you wanted to, there's jumping monkeys. There's a pushing monkey. Okay. And pushing right or left. And walking. So you could actually take the sprite animation stuff. Take these two. Now these are only two frame animation. So for example, on walking left, that's it. That's how he does it. But very simple. But it's two frame animation. And so you could make it so that when he's walking from one side of the screen to the other, he's actually turning and walking back and forth. And there's one other thing I want to show you, and that is with this pile up equals true up here. I'm going to go ahead and set that to false. And then right down inside of setup display, where we add body to the ground, we're going to just put an if around that. If pile up, then that means if pile up is set to true, then go ahead and do this. Otherwise, leave it off. So we'll either be adding the ground to the physics or not. So let's go ahead and try this. I've already set it to false. So the ground will not have any physics. And that allows this stuff to pass right on through, which makes this game just a little bit better if you're just trying to catch the food and not the other stuff. Okay. And why doesn't the monkey fall down? Because the monkey is set as static, not dynamic. And so he's just going to stay wherever we put him, other than the fact we're doing a transition two with him. But by setting pile up to true or false, it allows you to just change the way this works without commenting code and uncommenting code and things like that. So we've got pile up again here set. So now everything's going to pile up on the ground, other than the fact that when it kind of falls off the edges. And if you wanted, you could create some rectangles on the sides to kind of block things and then do an add body, set them as static so they don't fall out of place. And you could actually end up with all of this stuff raining from the sky and gradually filling up the entire play screen. So you've got some different options there. Play around with this and come up with your own little game with it.